Hey, okay, so we're continuing on. Chapter 21, we've gotten pretty far. Now, this is very, this is probably the most important thing I am ever going to ask you, tell you at the same time. Presenting your design? Hmm. Now, if you look at my Facebook videos when I was under the gun, did you see me projecting my design and presenting it? Did you see the stress that I was under? Projecting your design and presenting your design. Well, I ask you, is it really yours? And then I tell you, what if your role is to present someone else's idea, someone else's vision? So presenting your design. Just think about that. Just don't breeze over that passage, that heading. Don't breeze over it. It makes a huge difference. A, a huge difference. Owning. Possessive. Tangible. Intangible. Right? So just don't, freak, don't let that go without saying it's important. Now, finally, we're going to get into some, uh, some nice, uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, colors. And uh, hopefully you won't need as many psychotropics as I do. But again, they go up in your system and then you will uh, start to see the uh, beneficial effects of uh, power conditioning, your, your projections uh, with the psychotropic medication. If indeed uh, you've been through the ringer. <laughs> now, that being said, this isn't a joke. Again, this is going to be professional, Mike. Mike is a professional, believe it or not. I'm a professional. I do this in a professional capacity. In any event, although Autodesk Revit software is most often used to create parametric content for documentation, it is often necessary to show designs to clients and other project stakeholders to make critical decisions. Revit is tools that you can use to embellish views or create new graphics to help present the design. In this chapter, you'll learn to understand color fill legends, use 3D model views in your presentation, work with viewport types, create exploded axonometric views, which are fascinating. Understanding color fill legends, understanding the old axe wound. There are many times in the design process when you will need to go beyond documentation for construction and portray space in a different way. For example, you may need to communicate design intent, departmental adjacencies and allocations or room finishes because Revit software has these functions. You can use its parametric capability to do more than just generate annotation. You can graphically show all kinds of model parameters. The tool for creating this kind of view is called the Color Fill Legend. You can use this tool to create uh, to color areas and rooms in plans, sections, and elevations. It allows you to assign different colors to just about any of the room or area properties within a view. Here are just a few examples of the types of views you can create. Floor plans showing departments. Floor plans showing spaces based on area value. An example might be rooms smaller than 500 square feet or 50 square, millimeter, uh, 50 square meters as one color. Now, rooms that are between 500 and 1,000 square feet or 50 square meters to 100 square meters as another color. And rooms bigger than 1,000 square feet or 100 square meters as a third color. So, uh, just to make a note of this for us that haven't had the chance to practice our, 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 our 12 times table as fast as we probably should have, um, there is a common theme to the uh, imperial metric conversion, right? 500 is to 50, as 500 is to 1,000. Uh, um, 550 is to 100, as 1,000 is to 100. So as you see, there is a, uh, a, a, a ratio. In any event, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do the math as fast as I can at the coordination meeting. Now, anyway, at least come denominator. <laughs> it boils down to it's the fundamentals. It's fundamental. It's elementary, my dear Watson. There's also, there's also uh, an almost endless list 
of the types of color fills you can create to help communicate a wide variety of project-specific details. The color fill legend tool is located on the color fill panel of the annotate tab. An endless type of color fills you can create to help communicate. Endless type. On the annotate tab, right? Uh, color fill legend under the color fill panel places a legend interview to indicate the meanings of color fills for rooms or areas. Open a floor plan view or a section view to place a colorful legend. If you have not yet assigned a color scheme to the view, you will be prompted to select one. To create or modify a color scheme, use the edit scheme tool. And that one there, lorem ipsum, any of that. Notice the colors. They're earth tones. They're, they're more, they're more, uh, my gloss flat. There's flat colors, right? And one along the lines of flat. And there's a good reason behind that. Now again, you know me. <laughs> I'll go off on the vector six. Okay. To better demonstrate some of the uses of the color fill legend tool, let's make a simple color fill plan showing room types. Making a color fill legend for rooms. In many projects, it becomes necessary to display plans with some additional information about the spaces. Typically, during the design phase, Clients need to see how many different departments are located adjacent to one another. Even in a simple residential design, it can be helpful to see how public spaces, such as kitchens and living areas, are located relative to the more private spaces of bedrooms and, bath and, um, and bathrooms. Excuse me. In the sample building project used in Chapter 18, Documenting Your Design, you may want to visually show the space types in the floor plans. You want to graphically demonstrate which spaces have been assigned to various departments defined in the building's program of uh, requirements. To get started, download and open the C21 Sample Building Start RVT or C21 Sample Building Sample Metric version. Now, uh, from the book's website. I just want to let you know that it doesn't go into spaces as much as it should, uh, but in the MEP, it, it definitely, in the MEP portion of the Instructional Lecture Lab series, it really, really, really does. And the in the AutoCAD MEP, um, uh, lecture lab series that I perform, it goes into spaces, and spaces are the most important thing uh, in this realm, until I can remember that there's something more important. But spaces have a lot to do with it. Spaces uh, are, have a very, very um, big part to play. Okay, so now, you will begin by creating a new type of floor plan that will help organize the project browser and automatically assign an appropriate view template. To get started, follow these steps. Switch to the View tab in the ribbon. Locate the Create panel. And then choose Plan Views Floor Plans. In the New Floor Plan dialog box, click the Edit Type button. To open the Type Properties dialog box for the Floor Plan Type. Click the Duplicate button and then name the new view type Color Fill. Click the button in the parameter field named View Template Applied to New Views. View Template Applied to New Views. In the Apply View Template di dialog box, select Color Fill Plans, and then click OK to close the Type Properties dialog box. It doesn't tell you how it created that plan, and I could, show, I could teach you that, how it created this template. I'm all about the educational sector now that I have kids. I'm all about that. I had a robust education. At the Academia and the School of Hard Knocks, and in Harvard on the Boulevard, in any event, in any event, the boulevard ain't that bad, some say. Okay, so without going into a sociology explanation, let's talk about this now. So, yeah, uh, view the view template dialog box, select color fill pa uh, plans, and then click OK to close the type properties dialog box. Color fill plans, uh, you apply it. Right? 
shapes there, and as you can see color fill plans now. Uh, it, this view template is applied to this new view, the color fill type of floor plane. So the system family floor plane is a family. The type of this type of floor of plane is a color fill floor plane. And there's a view template assigned to this type of family, right? Okay, now, let's uh, continue on. Return to the project browser. Oh, I'm sorry, I uh, jumped ahead. Uh, yeah, after you assign that template to, uh, and I'm only rushing, so to save you, to save you. I'm only rushing to save you and me. <laughs> We're in this together. We're running for the hills. The British are coming. The British are coming. <laughs> Actually, I, I applied for a job up in Sleepy, uh, Sleepy Hollow, New York. If they asked me, do I know anything about it? Any, anything that they want me to do, I'm going to let them know. The British are coming. The British are coming. I may not get the job. But if they put me up against the wall and make, make it be that I, I'm not qualified for the job, I'll just say that. <laughs> and they'll leave. That was my plan. I'd go. I'd go anyway just to see Sleepy Hollow. Any anyway, event, uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah, so using the control key, select both level one and level two in the new floor plan dialog box and then click OK. So um, this new floor plan that we're going to create needs to be uh, on a floor, on a level, right? And what do we got? We got level one, two, roof, and, and roof two. Now keep in mind, um, this um, we already have floor plans, right? It just says do not duplicate existing views. If I click that and unclick it, it doesn't really make a difference here because of the fact that we're not creating a new floor plan, a double up of level one, roof or roof two. But if we're going to create just a regular floor plan, right? A regular floor plan, it would say do not duplicate. Well, then the only f level that doesn't have a floor plan associated with it right now is the roof two. So that's this checkbox, and it doesn't really go into that. It never did throughout the whole text. But uh, if you uncheck it, you'll be able to then create a duplicate of an existing floor plan that's already in the project browser. I think I explained that correctly. But we're going to use color fill, so it's not applicable. There aren't any color fill, fill floor plans yet. All right, so select both um, levels one and two. Level one and level two. Get our levels, and hit OK. Now. <laughs> Return to the project browser and you will see a new heading called Floor Plans Color Fill. Change the names of the new floor plans to Level 1 Department Color and Level 2 Department Color. Okay, Views, Floor Plans Color Fill, right? Let's go here, Level 1. Let's right now click on it and rename it. Level 1 hyphen, level one space, hyphen space, department, depth, depth space, hyphen space, color, level one, one space, hyphen space, depth, space, hyphen space, color, enter, right mouse click, right mouse click, copy, click out, click again, right mouse click, Rename, control V, paste, level two. Boom. Don't type it again. Oops. Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I did it differently. It was quicker. Anyway, the results are in. He's nuts. He's just nuts enough. I want one, but I won't smoke one. I went three and a half hours yesterday without one. Anyway, what sorts of carcinogens in that fucking thing? Now, let's go along the lines. Activate each of the new color fill plans and use the tag all not tag tool to add room tags to each plan. So activate both of them. Let's close this one. Level two's activated. Level one's activated. Let's WT, let's ZA on the shortcut keyboard so we have both of them. Let's note which one is which. One, two. Notice the difference in the highlight in the project browser when I switch between the two. That will help you discern what view you're in, right? Now I'm in this view. Anyway, then, wearing a green shirt from Kmart that I purchased for $11. Anyway, I am very 
very, very, very frugal. I am the frugal gourmet, and the galloping gourmet over the door. All right, now, so, activate them. For more information on tagging, see chapter 19, annotating your design. So, let's go to the annotate tab, and let's tag all not tagged. Let's start with level one. Let's go to annotate. Tag all, right? Tag all, not tagged. All objects in the current view? Well, it doesn't appear that anything is tagged, right? And I don't see a tag all not tagged uh, radio button. So I'm just going to select all of them. And I'm going to make sure I read this so that I don't have to do it again. Activate each of the new color fill plans and use the tag all not tag tool to add room tags to each plan. Room tags. Made a mistake. Cancel. Room tags. I don't believe that's the correct way to do it. It's a little ambiguous, but uh, hold on. Let me just uh, take a look here. I'm not 100% sure I did that correctly. I'm going to do it. Tag all. Room tags. Tag all not tag. Again, am I, um, am I missing one? Is there a tag all not tag extra button I added? No, wait. I don't see it. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a uh, uh, an educated guess. You know, a hypothesis, if you will. I'm going to hit OK. I think that's what they want for this exercise, um, just to, to know which rooms are which. Now, I believe, activate each of them and do that. So let's go to ZA, get this one zoomed in. Let's go to tag all rooms and hit uh, OK, apply, OK. So now, as you can see, um, we have uh, a, few, uh, a few room tags in there to denote which is which and what is what. Now, okay, and we're coming up on a certification objective again. Now, am I a gold partner yet? Platinum, Auburn, lead, copper, what order desk color am I? Because I actually got a call once. Am I order desk? What, what certification level are you in order desk? I said, I only have OSHA 10. That's what level I am in, in, order, uh, in order desk. I'm an OSHA 10 partner. And I love the uh, NOAA website. That's about as far as I go as far as certifications in this platform. Now, because I think I want to go fishing soon, open the level one department um, color floor plan and click the color fill legend button in the color fill panel of the Anasty tab, the color fill legend button in the color fill pa uh, panel of the um, annotation tab, color fill legend. Uh, no color or scheme is assigned to this view. Now let's just look, let's look here for a second. This will activate the color tool and ask you to place a legend somewhere in the active view. Anywhere for now is fine. Just place it to one side of the plan or the other. Once the legend is placed, you can then define and customize its characteristics. After the, after the legend is placed, you'll be presented with a dialog box similar to the one in figure 21.2. This dialog box will prompt you to choose from the list of space types available in the current view and color schemes that have already been established within the model. From the space type drop-down list, select rooms, and from the color scheme drop-down list, choose name and click OK. Now, that was a speed reading exercise. Uh, I didn't comprehend all of it, but I know it's in the project browser. So I'm just going to put this one up here. The dialog box will pop up. A color scheme has not been assigned to this view. The legend will appear blank. To apply a color scheme to the view, choose a space type and scheme and press OK. Uh, space type, spaces, HVAC rooms, right, 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 rooms, and then uh, spaces, three of them. Could very well have been areas if we wanted, right? Well, not necessarily. Color scheme, schema one, you can create schemas, more than one. This one just happens to have this one. Now, um, before I do that, before I do it, if you go into a view, there's a color scheme right here, right? And if you go to, if you look, it's assigned none. But again, look, you can create any scheme you want. Any scheme you want. Hmm. But try to keep them from being malicious. Try to keep them from being malicious. No malicious scripts, man. A lot of people scheme in this world. Usually those. There's lots of schemes. Uh, I'm not scheming. I'm scheming. Skimming off the top. Cutting it down the wind. In any event. Okay, so I just want to let you know we can place it in, in, in all those things. So now let's just place it. Like I said, we got the dialog box, and um, let's read through the text. After the legend is placed, you better 
Put it down on a box. No one's the one. Then you see on the screen. The color scheme will automatically generate a legend based on your room names and the color, the rooms, and color the rooms on the plan. Say so okay. No colors to find. Right? Now, did I select the scheme? Let's go back and see. Let's go back and see. Um, from the space type drop down list, select rooms, and from the color scheme drop down list, choose name and click OK. So I missed a step. Right? So from the uh, space type, select rooms, and from the color scheme, present, uh, press name and click OK. Ah, there you go. So I see, says the blind man, Russian. <laughs> I'm Polish too, right? Russian. They're always Russian us. Next thing you know, we'll meet in the middle, right? Call us up in half. The pig in the blanket. Anyway, a little World War II history for you. <laughs> in any event, what do I know? I'm just a stupid Polak. <laughs> Polak. Bipolar. A Polak. Wow. Oh boy, no soup for you. Green Legend. The lobby lounge manager, office HR support. That's aesthetically pleasing. We've been working in the black and white, right? And in the gray. And they're still fighting about it over there in the streets down uh, Fifth Avenue. Beautiful thing, though. Standing up for your rights and the rights of others. But again, the, the door swings both ways. Keep that in mind. Colors matter. And look at the colors in here. Look at the colors here, right? Uh, isn't that aesthetically pleasing? A little more easily identifiable for someone uh, to, to visually uh, conceive what exactly it is uh, you're trying to convey. All right, so I'm not going to go on a tangent, because you know me, with waxing nostalgic and um, painting the light fantastic. So the color scheme will generate a legend based on your room names and color the rooms on the plan. If you already created a color scheme that you wanted to use in this view, it would be a simple matter. Never is of selecting it from the list and clicking OK, and the legend and the and view would be complete. The default project template contains a few simple color schemes from which you can choose when you place your first legend. You started with a basic one that automatically assigns a color for each unique room name in the project, however. This type of presentation is not usually that useful. In the subsequent steps of the exercise, uh, I disagree. If you want to know, uh, we'll call it carpeting, you're going to get a certain extent. This may help you. That room can have that color carpet, and it will be a little more aesthetically pleasing. You make it photorealistic, right? In an axonometric view. Um, go ask Balkan. Uh, go Google Balkan uh, Architects, and you want to see some 3D views with some color schemes applied to them. Um, it, it makes a difference. Trust me. I, I sent a link on one of my, uh, I linked to him and his firm on one of my videos, on one of the last videos. What a fantastic um, kid that is. Right, in any event, in the subsequent steps um, of this exercise, you will create different color schemes to further explore more complex methods of presentation. And this is a certification objective, so I have to get serious. After the legend is placed, you can then alter its properties or choose a different color scheme. To modify a legend, select the legend, and in the Modify Colorful Legends context menu, click the Edit Scheme button. In the context of selecting it, edit scheme. It's starting to look like Microsoft Windows. Well, now, as you can see, this gets a little more into the uh, color spectrum. Um, this opens the aptly named Edit Color Scheme dialog box. Uh, this dialog box allows you to add, rename, or delete color schemes on the left side and define the graphic properties and attributes of these schemes on the right. A list is labeled color at the top of the scheme. It's a, uh, it's a definition, and, and, and it's a pull-down. This is the property by which the color scheme is being defined. It is currently assigned to color, the plan accordingly to room name. Each unique room name in the project is automatically generating its own color for the legend. It's true. So again, if you look down the pull-down, you see there's a few. Right? I'm not going to go into all of them, but again, uh, there's a color scheme. There's a scheme. Right. area as we go through these one by one colors are not preserved when changing which parameter is colored to color by a different parameter consider making a new color scheme okay let's make a note of that let's bring it back up to uh, where it was right. 
which was where? Not preserved, right? Not preserved. Generate all by itself, right? It generates all by itself. It didn't preserve it, right? right. Well, anyway, what's on channel nine? Okay, so this is a certification objective. A drop down list label color at the top of the scheme definition area appears. This is the property by which the color scheme is being defined. It is currently assigned to color the plan according to room name. Each unique room name in the project is automatically generating its own color for the legend. So as you see, value lobby, visible, yes, color, uh, RGB or Pantone. Fill pattern, none, which is actually something you could do, right? Um, and some uh, fill patterns, like surface patterns, like the tile, this 12 inch tile on the vinyl tile that we saw in the last exercise. There's a preview of it, and is, is it in use or not? Right? Okay, now, again, graphics cards can play a big part of this as well. GPU can play a big part sooner or the higher, the higher you go, and we'll talk about that. So I'm going off on a tangent. This is a certification objective. Colors matter, but psychotropics do as well. And I am on my medication. So, you are always safe. It's, the, it's me that has to worry. All right, now, okay, blah, blah, blah. This is a certification objective. Ooh, this is going to get real good. This is going to be good for all those folks that are in the, the civil, the civic-minded folks. Any of you civic-minded folks uh, are really going to like this. This is right up your alley. Uh, any folks that are in, the, in that particular uh, line of work. Okay, so yeah, uh, we could uh, change. We could change these schemes, right? And um, and some of them, you know, are, are very unique. So we're going to do, like I said, we're going to continue on with this uh, complex uh, presentation, and you will find that uh, it's going to get more and more uh, fun for you as it's going to be for me. Because I'll tell you, like I said, looking into this void space all the time and having these black, white, gray, and, and, and deviating back and forth, moving these lines back and forth, sometimes uh, you, you start to lose sight of, uh, of the, uh, the finer things in life. No one wants to sit there and um, everything um, looks better in black and white, they say, right, in this Kodachrome world in which we live. So again, you know, as you can see, the drop-down list at the top of the scheme definition uh, is available for you to pull down. And this is how uh, the property by which the color scheme is being defined. And as you can see, we're going to move from the color um, within this scheme. And we're going to use the, now the uh, list of schemes again and choose a different scheme. So as you can see, we have only two schemes. We have name and department, right? So now as you can see, department, color department. Uh, if you see, there's really nothing defined, right? No scheme definition. So, the color drop-down list now indicates the department parameter, but there are no d values defined in the list to the right. This is because text has not been added to the department parameter for any of the room elements in the project. Any parameter available to be used in a color fill legend needs to have values in its properties. You can enter the value in the properties palette either by selecting the item and finding that property, or by pre predefining values in the color scheme. In the following steps, you will predefine values for the departments and assign them to the rooms later. Now, the passage is important because it's going to teach you how to do the steps, but comprehending what those steps really were in, 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 in verbiage um, is really the most important part. So let's predefine some values. At the left side of the table, under scheme definition, click the green plus sign to add values to the color scheme for department. Right. New color scheme entry. Um, Create uh, four new values as follows. Management, operations, production, and sales. Management. Operations. Production. And sales. For now, you can use the automatic color and pattern assignments. Now, hold that thought. Let's read what it said to do before we follow the steps to comprehend what we just did, right? This is what I do. This is how I do it. 
The color drop-down list now indicates the department parameter. There are no values defined in the list to the right. This is because text has not been added to the department parameter for any of the room elements in the project. Any parameter available to be used in a color fill legend needs to have values in its properties. You can enter the value in the properties palette either by selecting the item and finding that property or by predefining values in the color scheme. In the following steps, you will predefine values for the department color scheme, which it didn't say, and then assign them to the rooms later. Okay? So what we did was just what I just said. So again, you can read it, kind of understand it, follow the steps, but not comprehend what you did. Right? This is an educational assessment on your end to my end. Now I know in the private videos, I scream right through this. But again, $400 was left in my account, man. 400 bucks, right? I had tickets up the ass. Oh, fucking, I had a, a trespassing warrant, warrant in Atlantic City, for Christ's sakes. Hey, fuck, let me tell you something. I got that grant, boy, and I thought I was fucking saved. Uh-uh. Let me tell you, I'm going to talk about the certification objectives. Want to play Survivor? How about lose everything and left with a pair of shower slides on your feet, a pair of shorts, and a t-shirt, and nothing else, and you're all in the world. You want to play Survivor? You want to drop on some tropical island? How about just try that here in the United States? Uh, you want to talk about a certification objective? You want to take my course? Huh? Maybe five times that's happened to me. Five times. But again, never of an aggravating nature. But I was fucking was aggravated. Oh, was I aggravated. Anything, you want to talk about certification objectives. You couldn't, you would not. 99% would fail. 99% would fail my course. Because that's where it would start. Come here with nothing but the clothes on your back. Remember what your mother and father used to tell you? <clears throat> Came into this world bare ass naked. <clears throat> anyway, I know a chick whose husband threw, threw his kids out of the house too. Decent chick. Anyway, maybe she's following along. I don't know. I wax nostalgic. Click OK to close the dialog box. You will notice in the floor plan that the legend now shows the title, department legend, and displays no colors defined. Fine. Notice the checkbox for include elements from links. Doesn't nearly go into that enough. Click OK. No colors defined. Right. <clears throat> Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? Beauty's only skin deep. Love is blind. Love is blind. This is the study of space. Love is blind. Yeah, department legend with no defined color scheme. Back in the floor plan. Select the manager room on the lower left of the plan and look in the properties palette. Okay, over here, corner office, double door. Find the department property and click in the value field to access a drop down list. Well, that's the tag. The room reference is not, it's hidden within the view. You would think that the text would have assigned that view parameter to be on in the template, but it didn't. So now what it says is back in the floor plan, select the manager room on the lower left of the plan and look in the properties palette. Well, you only could be able to do that. Now you would think, and this is important, like, oh, let's go up to visibility graphic overrides. No. Anyone? What do we do? What's the real solution here? Nope, we can't. This is being overridden by the view template now. So if you notice the visibility graphics, right, this dialog box, notice it's all grayed out, right? It's all being controlled by the template. So if we went to the template, now keep in mind, any view that has this template assigned to it is going to have the same problem. So what we need to do is to go into visibility graphics overrides, visibility graphics overrides model, right? 
annotation, analytical model, import filters. Same tabs we saw in this dialog box. Visibility graphic overrides model. Now, if we go, at least in annotation categories, right? If we go to rooms, if room tags, blah, 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 LMNOP, uh, no, it's in model categories, so maybe. Yeah, it's a line, so yeah, it would be considered a, uh, a model um, category. So hold on a second, rooms, reference, right? Reference. And again, it has no, it has no projection surface or cut pattern line associated with it because it's one of those things. But it does hide, right? And now, hopefully, if I did that right and I'm not talking out of my butt, you can see them. Yeah, there you go. So now, you can select them, right? Unless, of course, they're made unselectable. But you sometimes have to tab around. Like, because if you click this, there's a floor under it. Remember selection cycling from AutoCAD? It's kind of like that. It's sort of like that. It's synonymous with that. It's similar. In addition to that, it doesn't necessarily have to be coplanar or superimposed over the top in the draw order front and back, bring forward, send it back. It could just be that there's so many items that are possible possible to be selected that you're going to use, need to use the tab. So it's, it's a little more than selection cycling. So selection cycle to it, click it, and now you'll notice within the context of that, the, pro the room properties will open up. Right? All right, so again, it doesn't tell you how to do it in the book. It just told you once. It doesn't want to tell you again. I already told you not to do that. It told you once. It doesn't have to tell you twice. All right, so yeah, the values available in this list are the values you added to the color scheme. Now, select an eyes room on the lower left of the plan and look in the properties palette. Find the department property and click in the value field to access the drop down list. Find the department property. Notice the occupant is blank. Um, now, it says, what does it want us to put in here? The values available in the list are the values you added to the color scheme in step five. Assign the two rooms at the left side of the plan to the management department, the two rooms at the left side of the plan. Oh, office HR and manager to the management department, assign the lounge space to the sales department, and assign the support space to the operations department. Well, before we do any of those things, let's assign a pink slip to the entire office, right? Layoff checks. That's the occupant in, that, in, this, uh, in this room, a layoff check. And then the department management, let's put that there. The, uh, tab, the human resources, they're highly trained, so they don't get any layoff checks. Let's, they get into their management. They don't get any, they don't get layoff checks. They're highly trained. A resource, a resource. I'm attenuating, man. I'm attenuating. I'm a resource. Save me. I'm, I'm leaving you. Don't leave me behind. Human resources, I'm a resource. Have you ever seen the energy song from Schoolhouse Rock? Come on, I'm 50 for Christ's sakes. Where's the senior VP of human resources? What are you out of your fucking mind? You gonna let me go after all the effort I put in? I am so, so, so angry. Where's my golden fucking parachute? What am I, fucking Enron? Fucks, you bastards. You know, what the fuck, man? Someone's gotta give. Cough up the fucking money. Human resources. You're looking at one. Cough up the fucking money. Management operations. Or maybe another company's gonna lose a letter. You never know. Lots of letters in this city, right? Three letters, one letter. Lots of letters. Okay, operations to support, as usual. Operations. This is a highly classified operation. Tab. Assign uh, operations to this department. Operations and you know me. That's like pick around. Operations, apply that. And lounge goes to sales, nonchalance, right? As usual. <laughs> be crutch, be crutch them. <laughs> Listen, if you're a sales engineer, that's one thing. If you're one of the middle sales, snake oil salesmen, a whole motherfucking ball game. You know me. When it comes to nonchalance, and folks, 
and push the envelope. I have a pet peeve. I have a pet peeve. And, and you know, and once I got a thank you for my efforts from a sales executive, and only another time did I actually get taken out to lunch when if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't have closed the fucking deal in the fucking first place. One launch and one mention. Oh yeah, and he helped. Right? But again, sales is an interesting profession. Always be fucking closing. You know what's second prize? A set of fucking steak knives. Go home and play with your kids. Always be closing. <laughs> At least they have to have that attitude problem. All right, now, this is a certification objective. Management, operations, production, sales, produce. Seven kids. What a f you know? The pipe fucking piper. Click OK to close the dialog box. You will notice in the floor plan that the legend now shows the title, department, legend, and displays. Nope. Colors, rose colors, many colors. As you make these assignments, remember, you know, in the in the background, the stage is being set, right? As you set the stage, and remember, as you make these assignments, you know, these people in positions of power. In the know, the color fill legend will update, and the space will fill with the matching color. <laughs> Except for the lounge. <laughs> Except for the lounge. Damn salesman. Do I want Spados, Carmines, Ruth Chris, Peter Lugers? Smith Owenski, Sparks. Snap. I go to the Cipriani Club over on Maiden Lane. The starters. Color? Red. <laughs> Fuck. Red wine. Burgundy. With a surf and turf. Steak tartare. How about that apples? I mean, I'm not gonna call I'm not gonna call it a sales or a lunch. On principle or wrong. So this is a certification objective, I said. Manager, office HR, support, lounge, department, operations. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's the criteria? That's, all, that's the only criteria that this particular uh, pull-down has? Those four? You think that's all you need? <laughs> There's a little bit more to this. Don't forget, they don't ever put it in the office. They don't ever say it, though. They never put it in. They never put in the lore. There's an office here, um, and there's a Hopkins spinner. There's a cast master. There's the poppers. There are hooks. There are lines, and there are sinkers. But again, you don't really color the the the, the department that color, and you would never tip anyone off to that, right? Who, in their right mind, would create a department called the Loring? Because Sales is a whole nother fucking ball game. What do you know about sales? Department of Legend. <laughs> you buy this fucking car, bang your fucking head off the hood. <laughs> a shiny color fills without a legend. In the previous exercise, you generated color fills on a plan by adding a legend and then customizing the color scheme through the legend. You don't have a place, you don't have to place a legend to color a plan with a color scheme. In the properties palette for a view, you can find the color scheme property. Click the bottom, the button in the value row to open the edit color scheme dialog box and, and choose a, a color scheme to be assigned to the view. The plan will display the respective colors even without a legend shown in the view. You can always add a legend later by using the legend tool in the color fill panel of the annotate tab in the ribbon. You can you know, always do that later. Why are you doing it now? We have things to do. Go 
fucking desk. Go back to your fucking desk. I'm fucking done with you. Listen, you're this close to getting fucking thrown out of this fucking office. Get out of my fucking office. You got two seconds.